Hey guys, welcome back to another Logic Pro X tutorial. I'm Charles Klein, songwriter and producer, and in this video we'll be covering mastering in Logic Pro X for beginners. I did find that a lot of tutorials were out there are super um, educational and, in, and informative about mastering, but almost too technical for the beginner. So I really want to strip things down in this video and talk about the basics of mastering and the bare minimum that you can do on your tracks and your your music to master your song there is a bare minimum mastering you can do and there is also a very professional mastering you can do and a lot of songs should be professionally mastered by a professional mastering engineer uh, i'm not a professional mastering engineer but i do know how to do the bare minimum of mastering that is good enough and that's what we'll be talking about in this video. So the breakdown of the tutorial is quite simple. I first want to talk about what mastering is, and then let's dive into my logic session here where I have a song that we will um, master from scratch, from start to finish. Okay. Section one, for the beginner, what is mastering? It's the final stage of making a song complete. So before this stage, you would have um, a song that is fully mixed and in, in your eyes, it might be fully done and ready to go, but there is one more stage that you should do yourself or by a professional. It's called mastering. And primarily, mastering is making the song um, ready for all different types of speakers and louder. Essentially, mastering is making the song louder at its brass tack. So a question to ask yourself is, should you do the mastering yourself or should you hire a mastering engineer to do it for you. And I guess I guess I'll answer that question with another question and that question would be well where do you want to release this music and who do you want to release it for? So if you want to release this music, you know, just for your friends or just for a small audience or just to get started in music, then it's totally fine to do the mastering yourself. You can do it this way that we're going to cover in this video. If you answer that question with, well, I'm a huge artist and my songs are going to be you know, all over around on the radio and on the internet and played with thousands of different devices. Um, maybe you want to hire a mastering engineer. So here I am in Logic. I have a finished mix here that I'm ready to master. And uh, I'll give you a play just, just to give you a bit of a taste of the vibe before we get into it. Some nice chill guitar. Let's start the mastering process. The first thing I like to have to, so you're not going in blind while you're mastering, is have a reference track of a similar genre um, of style of your song up at the top here, or at least in your session, so you can reference. And I'm referencing the, the chorus sections here. And basically, I'm just going to reference quickly how loud my um, reference track is here. And then I'm going to go back and forth with this track just to see um, how loud this track is versus how loud my track is. Because basically right now we're going to go and look at the uh, the loudness factor of uh, of the songs. And we're going to master it and then go back and forth, tweaking some dials, making sure that our song is at the same level as a professional mastered song. So this is the reference. <laughs> So this bare minimum process of mastering that we're going to go through is going through this master chain here and adding different plugins until we get the desired sound we're looking for. Now, this is, again, because this is bare minimum um, grassroots, I guess you could say, kind of mastering, I'm just going to master straight in this session uh, on the master output of the track. This is my master track here. We're at zero dB here. You can see at a negative two um, without any effects loaded on to our master channel. So that's the first thing you should check when you're mixing your songs. Where are you peaking on your master output? If it's over zero, 
if it's red, then you need to fix your mix before you master because mastering, we're going to make um, this master output. We're going to cover those, uh, these negative two, and we're going to bring it up to zero. Two, I'm peaking at negative two in my mix. That's already pretty high. I don't even like to have it that high, but um, I'm not going to go in and fix it in the mix right now. So if you can have it at negative five, maybe negative six, that's probably your sweet spot. The first plugin in my chain is a ozone imager. This is a stereo imager. So what this is going to do is take everything and um, add some width to it, make it sound more wide. The benefit of having the paid plugin versus this one is you can add width and you can stereoize bands of EQ instead of the full frame of frequency. You can see my signal is kind of like pretty mono, like coming in right in this area. Actually, this is my voice talking. Add some width and stereoize the track as it's playing. You can hopefully hear the difference. It's also giving you some feedback at the top here, these little red dots if you're peeking. And so this would be over exaggerated. The benefit of using the paid plugin with the ozone limiter, um, sorry, the ozone imager is that you can stereo, um, you can add width to certain bands. So only the mids if you want, or only the lows or the highs. But here it's adding stereo to kind of width to everything. 21% with a bit of like five milliseconds. <laughs> The second step is I'm adding an EQ. So this is the Pro Q2 EQ by FabFilter. It is a paid plugin. This EQ is I'm doing like a 25 Hertz um, low cut. And that's because below 25 Hertz, you don't need that signal. And then I have this EQ here, which is you can see has a little S here. And this is doing 149 Hertz cut at um, yeah a, a low cut and a high cut here and that's only cutting the sides you can uh, how you do this is you can go here to this s and click click s and that's going to just make clean up the stereo image um, of, of the sides not the middle so it's not going to affect anything mono like your bass your vocal anything that you have running in the middle. Third plugin is a compressor. Not everyone likes to add compressors on the mastering change because chain, sorry, because you don't necessarily need com more compression, but I like to add it anyways. I think it makes it sound better. So that could be, a, that's a personal taste. And I use just a preset with the Pro C2 here and it's you, to presets, um, you go up here under mastering and I do the gentle wide. The preset is compressing a negative 10 and I don't want to compress it that much. So I'm going to compress it maybe a ratio of two to one and I'm going to bring up the threshold and I'm going to do an auto release. I'm going to bring up the gain a bit. Just because it's, it's the final compression, I don't want to smash it too much. And I'm, and I'm going to add a limiter anyways at the end. So just a compression of five, four to five is good. Negative four, negative five. Fourth plugin on our mastering chain is uh, another EQ. And this is just a shape EQ of some frequencies that you may or may want to boost a little bit um, or cut out. And I'm boosting at around 700 and 6,000 and a small boost at, at 66. And how I figured that out was I loaded up a multimeter plugin in Logic if you go to metering and multimetering. So um, let's just remove, we have two now. So a multimeter is just, will show you the signals uh, of your track. <laughs> You can see here that you want to try and cover most of the frequencies as possible depending on what style of music you're going for and where it, 
the, um, the dynamics are in your song. But I'm in the chorus here and um, I want things to be sound really full. And I do notice that in those areas of 600 or 700 and 6,000 that there could be a bit of an increase in frequencies. That's how I decided to make a little increase here of just, you know, one, two dB increases, not that much, not even two dB. It's like one, 1.19 here and 1.23 here. So the next um, plugin after the Shape EQ is a, a multi compression. And this is again by Fab Filter. You can be using one in Logic. There is a free multi presser here. And it's the same idea. You have different bands here where you can move. Um, increase the size and then you can also um, l increase the the com 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 compression <laughs> sorry again a preset because the presets are really good so this is a basic four pan four band punch and balance so you can see it's bumping the lows the mids a bit the highs and uh, actually everything pretty much so with it on it sounds like this <laughs> Here is also a nice image of what's happening in your song and where the where the frequencies are and what could be boost and what what could not be boost. The next plugin in our chain is a Fab Filter plugin. Again, it's called uh, Fab Filter Pro L, and it's a limiter. So this knob will increase the the gain of your entire track or whatever um, whatever it's on. And we're on the master chain, so it's going to increase the gain of our master. And so it gives us this zero dB signal here is where we don't want anything to go over. And w when we push up the gain, as our signal increases and it reaches this line, this plugin will just chop that signal, like completely just guillotine that off. Sorry if that's hurt your ears. It definitely shouldn't hurt your ears. That's, we're gonna leave that at a 6.5 because it's chopping those snare hits, but it's bringing everything else up nicely. Our output now is, is negative 0.4. I messed that up. I, I had the, I had the multi-presser on still at the bottom of Logic. So now we're at zero and nothing's going over. That's what we want. Let's take a listen now to our ref track um, just to compare loudness. And make sure you have the your, that this is at a, a zero dB and that your volume is at a comfortable level in your headphones to have a listen. Definitely a lot more low end in this reference track. Loudness factor, pretty similar. I can't notice a huge difference. And so that's a good sign. Um, but if we want our track um, to have maybe more more lows and um, we can go into our output again our master output and we can ch play with our multi-band maybe we can increase the crossover a bit of the low signals that it comes into this band and gets a bit of a more of a boost the mids down a little bit and i'm going to bump down the bands a bit here <laughs> back and forth with the reference track is basically how I finished the mastering stage and you got to keep in mind too you're making your own song here so it's going to sound a bit different here and there but two things that you can really benchmark with are loudness and you know the how low how bassy is the reference track how 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 much how how wow I can't speak today how are the highs in the reference track as well so you can really see if your track is missing these frequencies. Now let's take everything off and let's take another listen. So a significant difference, right? And mostly in loudness and punch really. But the next step of mastering would be just to 
fade in and fade out the ends so you know that your song is going to run nicely into the next song on your track or maybe it's just a signal a single and you know it's just going to fade out properly so you can do that by also opening up automation on your on your master track here and just fade the song out if it if all the tracks end out nicely you can also fade out the tracks them themselves and you can do the same thing if you want to fade in and then when you are comfortable with your master chain and everything is sound sounds right i would recommend that you just leave it be for like a couple days come back to it and have a fresh listen listen to it on your headphones listen to it on your speakers listen to your song in your car listen to your song on apple airpods give it to a friend that doesn't know music that well and see what they think and then you're ready to bounce the song so when you are ready to bounce the song you can do command B and you can, if you just want an MP3, you can bounce it as an MP3. You can also bounce it as a WAV file. If you're gonna publish this song on Spotify or YouTube, I do recommend to bounce it as a WAV file. 24-bit is fine. You have the option to go up to 32-bit. Even 16-bit is fine. So that's a finished master track based on the bare minimum that you have to do to consider your your track actually mastered feel free to subscribe and um, i do multiple logic tutorials every week i'm singer songwriter and producer myself so have a listen to some of my own music i'm curious to know what you think of it and i hope to see you in the next video